Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's unsurprising, really, that as we continue through the Gospel of John, we're encountering another fruitful sign in John's Gospel. If you remember, John uses signs, what he calls signs, to point to something beyond itself. Just like a road sign may tell you where the next next skyline chili is, John uses different symbols and words and images to point us to something beyond uh, what everyday life is like. And today, Jesus refers to himself as the vine, and we are the branches. when I first got to my, uh, the house that I, that I live in now, um, the previous owner had kind of left parts of the backyard in a bit of a mess. Now, I don't want to over-exaggerate. It, was, there's, it, would, it could have been a lot worse, but uh, there were a lot of vines and, and weeds in certain parts of the, back, of the backyard. And um, vines were taking over some of the untended portions of the backyard. They were... And in and so doing, they were choking out other plants, and they even damaged some of my bigger trees. I can't help but wonder if the tree that fell over in my yard, was a, a lot of it was these vines that had really attacked the tree. Well, these vines had flourished, but the truth is they weren't terribly difficult to get rid of. I mean, I guess it depends what you mean by difficult. There were a lot of them, so it took some time. There's still parts of my yard that I'm working on. Um, And, you know, I got some scrapes and bruises and frustrations, but the process itself really wasn't very complicated. Pruning back vines was really straightforward. A sharp pair of clippers makes quick work of spreading vines. But not all vines are bad, however, right? There's some vines, fruitful vines, are a whole different kind of uh, ball game than those fruitless invaders. I've cultivated some different vining fruits or vegetables in my backyard before. I'm, I've cultivated vining black raspberries and pumpkins have vines. I've been a little disappointed, I'll be honest, with my black raspberries. Um, the black, there's all kinds of vines, but I've not had that much fruit production. And I think it's related. I've, I think I've learned, the more I've read and talked to people, I realize that I've gotta be more aggressive in pruning back some of those vines so that not all the energy is wasted on making vines and more of the energy is sent to making fruit that I want to eat. Um, I've learned that when growing fruit, pruning is absolutely necessary. In fact, in recent years, I've learned, you know, YouTube videos and other things that even pruning tomatoes or Pumpkin flowers or pepper plants can potentially help with their fruit production. And as far as I'm concerned, I grow those vines not to look pretty. And so vines that don't bear fruit are not only a nuisance and an eyesore, they're not worth keeping around. The point is that Jesus is trying to make is that God is not just growing you and me as ground cover. Christians don't just exist to take up space. We're not just here just to sit in the pews, right? We're here to produce fruit. And we could think of, and sometimes we do in church, we think of all sorts of reasons why churches fail or why Christians are walking away from the faith. Um, But it seems highly likely, based on this reading at least, that sometimes God cuts off and prunes his church because he's taking away the branches that are being unfruitful. And of course, Jesus also says that even his own people, he prunes so that their lives might be more fruitful. Because God wants vines that bear fruit. I mean, no farmer would grow vines just for the look of them. They want them to produce fruit. And the fruit of the Spirit is, this fruit that we're talking about is the fruit of of the Spirit, that Paul uh, describes, you know, in Galatians, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If you're a Christian, but people around you wouldn't describe you with any of those words, (laughs) well, 
it's fair to ask, are you really a Christian? We're all, we admit, we're all a work in progress. But if there's no progress, well, then there's pruning. Pruning away at our lives, Jesus can help us to produce more fruit. But if we continue to fight God too much, we might be pruned away from the vine altogether. And it's also worth noting that Jesus doesn't just randomly pick vine as a sign to use. There's a history. And if you ever don't understand um, what's going on in the New Testament, there's a pretty good bet that if you look, take a closer look at the Old Testament, it may start to become a little clearer. In this case, vine is regularly used as a metaphor by Yahweh to describe Israel. In books like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, and the Psalms, Yahweh compares Israel to a vine, or in some cases, a vineyard that he has planted. This was a vineyard of grape vines, and it would produce grapes, which could, of course, be turned into wine. In ancient Judea, a more diluted wine was used as a regular everyday drink, because it kept better than just water sometimes. But in its stronger form, it certainly was used for celebrations and festivals and parties as well. So grapes and vine vineyards were an appreciated part, an important part of the, of the lives of the people. And in almost all of these Old Testament vine metaphors, one of the points was that God had planted his people. He lovingly and painstakingly cared for his vine. This was not just the case of uh, somebody like me throwing a seed in the ground and hoping and praying that it will grow. No, Yahweh knew exactly what he was doing. He knew what kind of fertilizer that plant needed. It knew, he knew how much sun, whether it was full or half. He knew how much water was enough and how much water was too much. And prophets like the ones we talked about, Hosea, Ezekiel, and Isaiah, assure us that Yahweh did everything that was necessary for this vine to prosper. The vine of Israel did not fail because of a lack of garden know-how or because of neglect. Uh, the second point of this vine metaphor, of these vine metaphors, is often, though, that Israel has failed to produce fruit. Yahweh was patient with this vine. Even Jesus in the New Testament talks about parables where he, the gardener gives one more extra year just to make sure that the plant is not going to do anything. Yahweh spends so much time on Israel, but it keeps on failing to be a faithful community or witness to him. Now, Israel is certainly guilty in this failure, but also we also see from the New Testament that God had a plan. It wasn't just that Israel was uh, any worse than anybody else. In fact, they weren't. Part of the problem was the old covenant simply wasn't going to cut it when it came to fruitful vineyards. Simply telling people right and wrong, well, it won't produce the right kinds of attitudes and actions and communities God desires. I think we can still see that today. You can't just tell people what to do and expect them to do it all the time. It takes cultivation, and often it takes the Holy Spirit. Israel, and, and for the, most of history for that matter, is a reminder that left to our own devices, we can often turn into bitter, petty, violent, and selfish people, which is another reason why it's so important uh, that we listen to Jesus and that we abide in him. He tells us that we are here to produce fruit. And the only way for us to really produce fruit is to stay connected to Jesus. The only way we will bear fruit is to abide in the true vine. Now, nowadays, churches are closing and memberships are waning. And we might sometimes wonder, will Grace Lutheran Church survive? Where will we be as a congregation in 15 or 25 years? The same question could certainly be asked of uh, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Will the LCMS be around in 15 or 25 years? Sometimes the numbers and the trends are a little worrisome. The pressures have increased and memberships are shrinking. Well, certainly, 
If the Lord sees fit to usher us out as a congregation or a denomination, then thy will be done, Lord. He, who knows? He may have a greater plan than one we can envision. But we know this. The church connected to Jesus will not fail. He may prune us. Looks to me like the church is perhaps being pruned right now. Those for whom Christianity is simply heritage or a family heirloom are leaving. Perhaps, perhaps they are being pruned back. Perhaps it's a warning call, particularly those whose lives don't bear any fruit of the Spirit. I mean, a rather important part of this whole vine imagery that Jesus says in John chapter 15 is he says his father is the vine dresser. I mean, it's often used to be translated as gardener, but vine dresser is probably a little more to the point. And you know, you could probably guess, if you don't know what vine dresser is, what a vine dresser does. It dresses, you know, it's making the vine uh, look presentable. When you dress up, you make sure that you are in right order. And the same, too, with the vine dresser or the gardener. He prunes or cuts off the unproductive and unfruitful branches. That's his job. A branch, after all, that produces no fruit is really not worth keeping around. So what can we do to avoid going under in the changing world that we live in? Well, the answer is simple. Stay connected to the vine and bear the fruit of Jesus. Are we bearing fruit? Are our lives as individuals, are our lives together bearing fruit? It's, the again, the fruit of the Spirit that God calls us to produce. And whether or not that results in more souls saved or larger church numbers is really not pivotal. The world may have varying definitions of what success for a church might look like, membership, the bottom line, and new members or social media shares. But at its core, a successful congregation from a Christian perspective, or a successful Christian, we might say, is one that is connected to Jesus, the vine, and bears the fruit of Jesus, the fruit of the Spirit. Staying connected to the same sort of attitude that Jesus exemplified, one that's focused on God and on others, and also making his words and gifts, like the sacraments and the Holy Spirit, are the most important ingredient in our life together connected to Christ. We have been called to bear fruit, to make a difference, not just to be here to exist, but to do something positive and to in line with all those fruits of the Spirit that we talked about, to love, to be self-controlled, to be peacemakers, to be patiently relying on the promises of the Lord. And the only way to do that is to stay connected to Jesus. And the good news is, if that's what you want to do, if we want to bear good fruit, it's really, again, quite simple. If we stay connected to Jesus, looks like to me the rest of it, the active working of the Holy Spirit and the Word in our lives will work itself out. After all, listen to the second part of what Jesus says. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches, and whoever abides in me will bear much fruit. He it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. We admit, we can do nothing on our own, but Jesus the vine pumps life into us, and through him, and connected to him, we will bear much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen.